all, all my prints are aquatins. That's a traditional technique developed in the 18th century by a French priest, I believe, which is the main tonal process in etching. <coughs> in the conventional method, the plate is covered with a uniform layer of powdered resin, which is shaken on the plate and then melted. Now this forms little dots, little islands of resin, which the acid, the nitric acid we use, eats round so that you have a series of little white islands and little black channels between them. The longer you leave the acid, the plate in the acid, the darker, the deeper the bite is, and the darker it becomes. And you make the image by progressively, progressively stopping out, covering up with varnish, areas of the plate that are already bitten. Now, if that's a simple image, say like this, where there are different whites, greys and blacks, that's fairly straightforward. You put, you cover up the white areas at the outset, so the acid never, never, never gets there. Put it, put the rest, put the plate in the acid for a few seconds until all the remaining areas are a pale grey. You then have to take the plate out of the acid, wash it off, dry it off, and cover up the areas that you want to remain pale grey. Back in the acid it goes until you get to the next tone. You cover, then cover that up, back in the acid again until you're biting smaller and smaller areas of darker and darker tones. Now that's very simple in a plate like this, which is, uh, is no great demand on the drawing process. If you're trying to do an image, let's say like Adam and Eve here, it's obviously very much more complicated to decide which is the grey, which is the black, which is the white. And in the conventional method, each time you bite the uh, tone, you have a chance of getting it right or getting it wrong. So you might get three of the tones fairly right, and one much too dark or much too pale. The method I've gradually evolved is completely at variance with all this. I don't start with a uniform resin, but I start with the painting itself. I start with a painting done in etching ink, printed usually by hand, so it's not too sticky. Printing that image onto a clean plate and shaking resin onto the plate, and then banging the plate before, it's, before the resin is melted so that some areas have thick resin and some have very little resin. When this goes in the acid, some areas which are thick will bite slowly and the others will bite much more, much more quickly. The thin ones will bite quickly. So I bite all the tones simultaneously. They were these wonderful images of your father's young years of Birmingham and the black country, of miners, canals, wharves, and then lovely images of Warwickshire, the countryside. And that's been clearly an absolutely critical and determining influence on me. The love of black and white, I presume, grows there. It was also reinforced by my own teacher, Anthony Gross at the Slade, who was very much a black and white man. And I still feel that all the very best etchings have been black and white. The great artists in print are Mantegna, uh, Rembrandt, Goya, and I suppose Picasso also.